Okay, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm so sorry I posted the event so last minute. Um, but thank you all for getting on. And um, tonight, I want to talk about being bold. And the main topic within that is going to be overcoming objections. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I am Sarah Taylor. I am your Diamond Ambassador Upline. And I uh, want to open the call by just thanking everybody for um, sending Gavin and I to Arizona this past week. I recorded a um, video about that um, whole trip and the Silver Stars experience earlier, and it's taking forever to upload. So I'll get that out to you guys tonight and post it to the team page. Um, just share, share some insight that I got from um, the trip and the execu executives and everything like that. So to start the call, <laughs> I wanted to run some stats by you guys um, a little bit before we get started. Um, these stats kind of stuck out to me and they kind of give you a, a good idea of kind of what we're dealing with within Plexus. So the first one is more than one third of adults that's 34 point, or sorry, yeah, more than one third of adults, that's 34.9% of adults are considered obese. More than two thirds of adults are considered overweight or obese. And approximately 17% of children and teenagers ages two to 19 are considered obese with 31.8% being considered overweight um, or obese. The CDC is projecting that one in three adults could have diabetes by 2050, and that is incredible, one third of adults. Obesity is currently um, the biggest driver of preventable chronic disease and healthcare costs in the United States, and it currently estimates that the cost range from these preventable diseases um, as a result of obesity is $147 billion to nearly $210 billion a year. That's astronomical. It's a crisis in the United States. And on top of all that, according to the study published in 2015, 64% of Americans are currently listing stress over money as their biggest source of stress. That's nearly three in four people, you guys. So, <laughs> you know that we have an answer to all of this. Um, it may not be the answer for everyone, but we have an answer for this for people. Um, we have seen it change lives every day, and we have to be bold in what we're seeing. We have to be bold in the fact that we have something that people need. Um, it's really time to get bold in the confidence within our discussions with Implexus. Um, we have these proven products and a proven opportunity. So honestly, being bold is my favorite topic. Um, it was actually my, the decision I made on New Year's Eve one year ago. Um, my resolution was to be more bold with Plexus and to be unapologetic with Plexus. And that decision almost, you know, a little over a year ago has completely changed our lives. So the trick to being confident and bold is obviously in growing yourself, but you cannot sit around and wait until you know all things Plexus to dip your toes in. So get bold. We got to dive in and utilize your upline as much as possible um, in the beginning. And you can learn, you know, kind of on the go. That's how I've done it. We have the expertise and we have the tools and we're one team. So you have upline support, sideline support, and we don't need to be reinventing the wheel as we go. So I wanted to start with all of that, but today I want to talk to you guys um, mainly about the objections that we get from potential customers and ambassadors and how to handle that because everybody gets them, but it's how you handle them that matters. And it's only natural for somebody to bring up these objections, but it doesn't mean that they don't want to try Plexus. It means they have a little, you know, natural and predictable fear surrounding um, just starting something new like Plexus. And that's okay. That's expected. And I bet most of us have them too. So if somebody brings up a question or an objection with you, I want you to be bold in handling it. Boldness comes from that knowledge. It comes from confidence in yourself and conviction that you know these products work or that this opportunity is ideal. So take the steps to grow in your confidence, research the products, and become familiar with all things Plexus. 
but people can see that hesitation, that fear, and that lack of confidence, and it can make them bring up more objections. And it can also be that intangible thing that ends up making them not buy from you. Conversely, somebody confident, sorry, somebody crazy confident and projecting um, the assumption that they're that you're going to sign up or purchase, that's going to lead people to the belief that they should do this too. So we want to work on building on being, um, you know, our best self um, going forward and being confident in what we say and confident in what we are selling. So if you're unsure and you can't boldly answer back, I'm hoping that we can really help you um, on this call. So we don't want to shrink back and allow the objection to be the final no when it was never intended that way for your customer. So I want you to look at each objection as a natural part of the conversation. The objections are going to come up. They absolutely are. But it just means that we haven't covered something with that person and that they have a question about it. It doesn't mean that they don't want to try the products or that they are, think poorly about you or the opportunity or something like that. They simply just have a question in their head. So addressing this head on is um, the best way to do it and not running from it. You know, we definitely don't want to run from the objections or try and cover up the fact that we don't know the answer. So I hear a lot from people. Um, I hear that you know, a lot of people are afraid to get started until they know more about the products, about Plexus, and they're kind of letting um, fear hold them back. I want that to stop right now. Um, this is exactly what our uplines are for, like I mentioned earlier, and no one on this team does this alone. So I want you in the beginning, if you're just starting your journey or if you're not feeling confident in how you're um, projecting Plexus and how you're talking to Plexus, I want you to use your upline for three-way chats. At the very least, I want you guys to send them screenshots of conversations that you're having so that they can help you with wording back to these potentials. Um, and especially on the road to silver, I think this is the most important. But for anybody on this call that is stuck in the least, this is imperative. So some of the most common pricing or some of the most common objections um, that we get from people are pricing. Do the products work? Is this a pyramid scheme? Is this a scam? And those <laughs> ever present, I read some big bad uh, reviews online. I looked at some blogs and they're saying bad things about Plexus. Um, also, uh, I've heard there's some dangerous ingredients in the products or just you get the flat out, no, I don't want it. You also get that people have tried it before and it didn't work for them or I'm not a salesman. So I'm going to cover all of these as briefly as possible so I can hopefully give you guys some ammunition to be able to handle these with people. Um, the, I'm going to start with pricing objection because that seems to be the most common that people receive. So one of the things about pricing um, is that when you receive a pricing objection, it more than likely means that you haven't built enough value in the products and what they're, they will do for that participant particular person on the front end. Um, so for future reference, if you're selling, never mention the price until the very end of the conversation. Always remain the consultant and show your friend how the products will impact them and their specific goals first. So you're asking tons of questions, you're educating them on, on what you're recommending and why you're recommending that specific thing. And I found that when you show them the value on the front end and not a cookie cutter recommendation and really tie it into what that person is saying, they're less likely to ever even raise the objection. Um, so when I get these objections, I really like to use the feel felt found method. Um, I don't know if you guys have all heard of that, but I'm gonna give you an example um, with the pricing objection of how to use the feel felt found method. Um, so I completely understand why you might feel this way. In fact, I felt the same way when I was first looking into Plexus, but here's what I found. Many of my customers are, have reported that they actually save money by taking the products, and I know that this has been true for me as well. They are able to avoid eating out as much. They stop getting snacks and energy drinks and coffee. Many are able to get off expensive medications and even OTC medications as well. And I've had multiple people break it down for me and show me just how much they're spending on things each week. And what it boils down to is that Plexus is a tool for a lifestyle change, and you're going to be surprised at how different you eat and how much less your life revolves around caffeine. 
So simply connecting with them on their level and kind of putting them at ease that you had these um, issues too, you had these objections too, but telling them how, what you've seen since you've started Plexus and why it's actually not the, the case. So the other half of that is that our products, products are not expensive at all. Um, it boils down to about three to four dollars per day and I would pay a heck of a lot more for that and I know most of you guys would too so don't project any kind of pricing bias onto your potentials if you think that the products are too expensive which they absolutely are not I'm here to tell you um, don't let them you know think that do not let them and do not if it's somebody that you think probably can't afford this don't put those words in their mouth either um, always assume you want to be almost dismissive with the price you know that th these products are worth it that's why you sell everything on the front end um, the last part with the pricing is if somebody does bring this up to you as an objection this is an essential time to be bringing up the opportunity with these people. Talk to them about the ins and outs of being an ambassador, how we don't have quotas, we don't carry inventory, that it's cheaper to buy as an ambassador too, and then explain to them you know, how the compensation plan works and how they could end up getting their um, products paid for by their commission checks. I think it, this is the single biggest thing that you can present to these people because that stat that I told you in the beginning part, you know, with 64% are concerned with money, so that's why this pricing objection comes up, but that's why people need these this opportunity so much. Um, so the bottom line is honestly, where there's a will, there's gonna be a way with this. I mean, people can afford it. They can restructure um, their, you know, their output each month on with finances. And you can also, of course, always talk about the 60 day money back guarantee as well. One of the things I learned at corporate this week is that we have a 1% return rate on the guarantee. That's huge. That means that only 1% of our sales are coming back and people are getting a refund on them. So, I mean, that stat is very, very telling. Um, it means we have products that work. Our customers are very, very happy and they're not using that guarantee. So we need to share that with them, you know, that I think that's a really great stat to share during that, you know, part where they're maybe a little bit concerned at the products. So that kind of leads me to the next objection and that's do the products work. And many, so obviously many people have hesitation surrounding this. Um, this is network marketing. They feel like we um, can sometimes have a personal gain in selling to this, you know, these products to them. So they have a lot of concern about whether or not the products work. So make this part personal, you know, use that feel felt bound method and talk to them about how you felt the same way when you were first, um, you know, looking at Plexus and that you were concerned also, but then share the, your personal testimony with them. It doesn't have to be your full testimony. Just to tell a little bit, give them some snippets of the testimony, give them the highlights, and explain what your experiences have been with the, um, with the products. Because remember, you're selling to them. Um, this is about you and them and your relationship. And what I always like to do too, is when this comes up, is I also like to just throw in um, little snippets of my friend's testimonies as it relates to them. So if they are dealing with some of the same things that one of my other friends dealt with, I'll mention it, I'll be like, hey, you know, Amanda, um, she dealt with the same thing that you're talking about too. My friend Amanda, she's my sorority sister, and you know, this is what happened with her, and she has the exact same kind of background as you. So you know, kind of relate it back to them, because even if you don't have the same um, starting point as them, you can you know, build some common ground there um, just through conversation. Um, and this is really honestly where your confidence and conviction are going to come into play. Um, so like I said, I would say I felt the same way. Trust me. I was a huge skeptic, um, but I'm your friend. I love the products and they work for me. I would never just sell you on something. And the bottom line is an almost billion dollar company that has a 60 day get money back guarantee does not make products that don't work. The growth of our company is through the roof and so many people, um, would have caught on if these products didn't work. But keep it personal. That is my biggest um, piece of advice with, with that one. Um, the next one is, is this a pyramid scheme? 
You guys, I love this one. I know that a lot of people get, you know, you kind of get annoyed, but I love it. Um, it gives me a chance to brag on Plexus for a little bit. Um, and I think the biggest thing is to not get, you know, that, that word pyramid scheme can kind of make all of us get our, um, you know, backs up and we get kind of, you know, upset or annoyed when somebody um, brings that word up to us. So don't get defensive with that because um, there really are, there are pyramid schemes out there and, and there are shady network marketing companies. So they do exist and pyramid schemes are a very real thing. So it is something that they should be concerned about. All right. um, hang on. There we go. Sorry guys. Somebody somehow unmuted. Um, but anyway, so obviously there's uh, network marketing companies out there that are very, um, they are pyramid schemes. And so we have to be aware of that, that that is a thing and that is a valid concern that people might bring up. So what I always say is, I'm so glad you asked. I was very scared about, um, of the same thing, when, and I asked the same exact question when I was signing up. And what I found that I didn't fully understand what a pyramid scheme was. Do you know what one is? And put it back in their court and ask them. Because chances are, they might not be asking the question that you think that they're asking. Um, and use this opportunity to educate them on what a pyramid scheme is and how that's different from network marketing. So the the um, explanation that I always give about a pyramid scheme is that pyramid schemes are illegal, um, first and foremost, but that does not mean that they don't exist, and you're right to be concerned with that. We have a very healthy working relationship with the FTC as well as Morgan Stanley, who handpicked us as an investment firm, um, as an investment for them, excuse me. Um, they wouldn't touch a pyramid scheme at all, but to help you understand what a pyramid scheme is, it's when a business model works so that those buying it at the very bottom have to pay a crazy fee to join. That money funnels up and the top people um, are the only one that they get paid, not even the middle, not certainly not the bottom. Um, and everybody's losing money along the way, except for the people at the very top. But there's no other, there's no alternative way to make money. Um, so there's no product being exchanged. There's no product, actual product for sale. And there's not an actual, you know, there's no money exchanging hands for the sale of goods. Um, and so obviously Plexus is a product based company. That's what our whole entire business model is centered on, um, our amazing products. And so the other half of that is you can actually make money, more money than your sponsor. You can out earn them. And without even outranking them, you can out earn them. And you can also make money from moment one. Um, and I always kind of share my personal story at that point that I was able to cover my mortgage with my first month's payment and everything. But definitely kind of research what a pyramid scheme is. And like I said in the beginning, don't get upset when people ask that. It does seem like a dirty word, um, but it does give you a chance to brag on our company. I always say that the top earner in the company joined less than three years ago, and our fee to join is also very, very low. It's only thirty-four ninety-five. Um, so I can say for myself that you know this has definitely not been a pyramid scheme. And I always throw in too that my um, husband is a financial advisor and he's in on this as well, and so he had to get approval from um, JP Morgan and um, the FTC to be able to do this outside activity. So obviously they wouldn't be allowing him to be working in a pyramid scheme. Um, so the next one is, is this a scam? Um, and obviously this is a big concern for a lot of people as well. Um, we're selling health and weight loss products, which naturally people are skeptical of. We're also a network marketing company. So it's just a valid concern. Um, so I always tell them that, you know, this was a major concern of mine when I signed up and I was concerned I was going to have tons of inventory and nothing to show for it and no one to, you know, I didn't think that anybody could actually ever reach the upper ranks. And what I found is that Plexus doesn't give us quotas. We have no contracts and no inventory and we are hundred percent in control of how much money we spend on products and there's no required purchases. Um, and so that example I just gave you about my husband um, having to get it approved for his work, I always say that too. And then I always bring up the fact that we, um, that Plex, you know, that Plexus has just built a 70,000 square foot, a brand new office building in Arizona. We're also debt free. 
Um, and then we've seen, of course, the comp plan and the products work with people and bring up that 60 day guarantee again. Um, but yeah. when people are asking whether it's a scam, um, they're thinking that this is one of those shady fly by night companies that's going to take all your money and close down the doors and you're not going to get anything from it. Clearly, you know, you can be confident in the fact that this is, that's not the case. Um, if you need to send them pictures of the new office building or something like that, I mean, those kinds of things are a big deal. This company is, you know, debt free and they have a 60 day guarantee. So it's those, those things are big selling points. Um, hang on one second. So the next thing is the bad reviews online. Um, I know we've all come up against this and it quite frankly, it caused me hesitation too. And, and that's the honest truth. When I was looking at um, Plexus, I was, I got a little bit concerned, but what you have to, to realize and what I always tell people is that I found that those reviews and blogs are generally put out by competitors. If you dig deep enough, you can see that they are selling competing products um, with multiple different companies. So my go-to with this issue is I always accept, ex suggest, excuse me, doctor approval. If you suggest to them that they should take it into their doctor or their pharmacist and get it approved by them, that kind of puts the ball in a medical professional's court, um, number one. Number two, you should always be doing this, but especially if they're bringing up this concern. Because if you're confident enough to tell them to take these products to their doctor and get it approved by them specifically for their health you know, makeup, then, I mean, there's really no other argument beyond that. Um, so encouraging a doctor review of their products should pretty much squash that right away. If somebody gives you a specific example or cites a specific blog, I always ask them for the source and then I show them why, you know, that person can't be trusted. Um, we do work hand in hand with the FDA. We have FDA oversight on everything that we do and we are, um, that we are tested in accordance with the FDA as well. Um, so our lab tests and um, researches for all, you know, all of our um, products and they research and test them for over a year before they're even put out on the market. And that is all in accordance with all of the regulations that we have as well. So um, one little side note on this, though, is that our company, and I am floored by this, but they are providing, they're paying for right now, clinical trials on all of our products. And that's huge. Um, those are extremely, extremely expensive and uh, a huge undertaking for the company, but it's gonna give us the ability to make certain claims on our products, and we're gonna have those clinical trials to be able to back up what we're saying. So that's huge, and those are in the works. So that's something that you can share with them as well. Um, they're, I mean, they're well underway. Um, clinical trials take a long time to complete, but that we should start getting them this year, um, the results. So. I also encourage you during this time, you know, to talk to them about credible, credible sources. Um, a little education on the fact that blogs, you know, are not really a trustworthy or reliable source of information. If they're concerned about the ingredients, suggest that they research them. I guarantee you if they sit down and they research the actual ingredients of our products, they will have no issue. Um, and again, just take them to the doctor. Um, but Obviously, anybody can put anything on the internet, and we should never let those, those silly reviews um, derail us. So, um, can everybody make sure that they're muted? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, the last one of the last ones is that Slim. Um, I've seen a lot of people get this strange um, objection that Slim has too much caffeine in it. Um, and this one, guys, these kinds of objections that you get that are just flat out wrong, um, this is where knowing your products becomes so important, or at least having your upline involved in the conversation becomes so important. Because I feel, you know, Slim doesn't have caffeine in it, and in fact, every single batch is tested, and it has, we have never had a batch test for any traceable amounts of caffeine in it, so... They take three samples out of each batch and they test it. It's green bean coffee extract. It's not caffeine. So there is the um, chance that there could be some caffeine in there because of the green bean coffee extract, but it is not. So uh, that was one of those weird ones I wanted to bring up because it keeps 
seemingly coming up for people. And then um, one of the things too that we sometimes get is after the fact, like after you have sold people the products, people tend to attribute every little thing that comes up to the introduction of Plexus products. And they'll be like, oh, Plexus gave me the flu. I had one lady that told me Plexus, and I'm not kidding you guys, gave her an STD. So there is no possible way that stuff like that, you have to be bold in the fact, and you have to realize like people are going to blame the products for whatever happens within that um, time frame, And you have to be confident and convicted enough and understand your products well enough to be able to be like, well, I'm sorry, that's not possible, you know, or like with the flu example, maybe that's not the flu. Maybe they don't have the flu, but they're going through die off and you can start, you know, to educate them on the die off process and that kind of stuff. But you guys stand firm in those instances when you know it couldn't possibly be the products that are causing this. Don't be afraid to be bold in that and be like, look, I'm sorry, that's not caused by plexus. Take a step back and rationally think about this for a second and, you know, go forward with it. Um, but they love to, for it to be a scapegoat and, um, you know, detox can do a number of things to them. So sometimes it's setting proper expectations that they're going to go through these things as well. Um, but just being confident in the fact that some of that stuff is just not even, (laughs) um, so one of the other ones that we get a lot too is that Amazon won't sell Plexus. Why, why won't Amazon sell Plexus? Y'all, this is way old news, way old news. Um, Plexus actually won't let Amazon sell Plexus because we're supposed to be, you know, eBay is not supposed to be selling it, Craigslist, none of those places. We are the independent distributors. And so with Amazon, it was actually a situation where um, Plexus asked Amazon to stop selling the products. The products got brought to Amazon's attention. And then Amazon, it kind of relates all back to the thought that there was DMAA in our um, products which there never was. So let me, that um, objection, that DMAA um, gets brought up a lot. And so what is that? Why would that be brought up by people constantly? The thing is when Plexus, about three years ago, um, Plexus was trying to get into Canada and Australia. And the Canadian government thought that um, the Accelerator, our original version of Accelerator, had something called DMAA in it. When it didn't, it was also, it was actually another ingredient entirely that shared the same chemical ancestry as DMAA. And so after many, many, many tests, Plexus ended up pulling it off the market and putting out Accelerator Plus because they really wanted to get into those two markets. Um, But after many, many tests after the fact, um, the government determined that we never even did have DMAA um, in the products. So it's one of those things I'd be happy to tell, talk to anyone else offline about it um, further, but just be confident in the fact that if somebody is bringing that up, be like, you know what, that was a concern at one point, but Plexus has been able to repeatedly refute that that was never in our products at all. Um, it was the geranium oil. So um, when you get a flat out no, you don't want to buy. I think this is the biggest, one of the biggest reasons that people are afraid to be bold within Plexus and within um, selling is that fear of hearing no. You guys, this is silly. (laughs) I mean, what is going to happen if we hear no? Are you going to die? Are you going to die? No. Will your friend never talk to you again? Are you going to be shunned? No, (laughs) you guys, like, no, the worst possible thing that you can hear is, oh, nope, they don't want it. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. It doesn't mean that they don't like you. It doesn't mean that they're not your friend. And also, no doesn't always mean no. So sometimes when people tell you no, it just means that you haven't quite uncovered all their objections yet. So you have to ask that simple question, why? Like, what what is the reason that you don't want to try it? And that simple why will go a long way. But sometimes no doesn't mean no either. It means just not right now. Because I know that I can speak for myself and the fact that I heard about Plexus about seven months before I actually tried it. Um, But Jamie was, um, she was consistent enough in her sharing that eventually I did end up trying it. And obviously I joined. But it has to be a timing thing for both people involved. Um, And you have to respect that as well. So sometimes 
no means no right now, but people, you know, a month or two months down the road, if you keep dropping those subtle seeds and in in that follow up, never take them off your list and continue to follow up with them, that no will turn into a yes. Um, so no's are just a part of the business. And if you're not getting any no's at all, you're not doing it right. But take that fear out of hearing no. It's not a big deal. Like I promise you guys, it's people aren't going to defriend you over this. <laughs> um, we also get a lot of um, question about, you know, okay, I've tried it before. It didn't work for me. Um, and whether that's regarding selling or whether that's regarding the products, um, selling for another network marketing company, excuse me, um, or trying the product. So obviously we hear a lot of that. But one, this is a conversation where um, you have to start digging deeper because it could be that simply, you know, expectations weren't set correctly from the front end. It could be um, that customer service was lacking and the fact that the person didn't troubleshoot with them correctly. Or it could have been that they were completely on the wrong products, that they had gotten on the wrong products for their specific situation. So if somebody says that, don't allow that to be the end. Just sit down and chat with them and be like, okay, well, what products were you on? Um, where you, maybe they were sabotaging themselves at that point with their diet or something like that, you know, treat it like they're your own customer and then figure out, you know, where they need to be on, um, with the products. Um, and the last objection I'm going to cover is the, I'm not a salesperson, um, objection for when you're talking to someone about signing up to be an ambassador. This is a big one um, that we hear so much, but the thing with Plexus is, it is this is not a typical sales um, organization. This is not typical hard sell, hunter style um, selling or anything like that. This, the people that thrive in this um, business are people that are able to make relationships, are people that um, have influence within their social social circles. Um, the best people in this business are non salespeople. They are people that are just friendly and outgoing and have the uncanny ability to build relationships with people and that they're driven. Um, they have a clear picture of their why and they are able to um, move forward with that and share their passion and excitement for the products. It is not about the technical sales process and it's not about, um, you know, following up on leads and that kind of thing. This is about farming your relationships with your circle, um, farming your relationships with your network. And so what I have seen is that some people that have extensive sales experience that can sometimes hold them back. And so that's what I always tell people when, um, they bring up that I'm not a salesperson and you can bring up the, um, the example here, and I bring this up a lot, of, you know, you go out to eat and you have a really great dinner at your favorite restaurant. And then you post about it on social media and you'd be like, man, Chili's was great tonight. You know, we loved, um, the waiter was amazing. We had a really great meal, what have you. That is network marketing. Um, sharing about your favorite shampoo or your mascara or, you know, whatever it is, your car, that is network marketing. You don't have to go for that hard close with um, Plexus. This is more about relationships. So obviously being bold is imperative with the business. Um, we have one of the most you know, sought after health and wellness products in the market and our growth is through the roof. We have an excellent executive team. Um, I can promise you guys that. And um, we address the two fundamental issues that, you know, our society faces, the financial issues and the health and weight loss issues. Um, so trust me, you guys, you guys have a gold mine in your backyard. We've heard, you know, that saying before, but pretend you have a gold mine in your backyard and you have all the tools, all the training, the upline support, the sideline support, everything to get that gold out of the ground. But I guarantee you, if you don't go out there and mine for that gold, somebody else is going to. Your neighbor's gonna hop the fence and start mining in your in your backyard. So we should be so excited that we have a solution for so many. And I know, you know, one of the reasons I've been so successful is that I have researched researched the company and the products inside and out and I understand why they are so amazing and why the comp plan is as well. 
And I know that when I walk into a room of 100 people, I can guarantee you that everyone in that room can use our products or our opportunity in one way or in it, another. And that's the kind of the beauty of this particular company and this particular business. So <clears throat> the biggest thing is to stop caring what people think about you. It truly does not matter what your high school friend Johnny, who never you know talks to you, <laughs> thinks. It's is the world going to end if he knows that you are in network marketing? I don't think so. Network marketing is a business model of the future, and it's our mission. Our, you know, it's our company is amazing, and we are allowing you know moms and dads um, across the U.S. to have more freedom in their lives. And we know that you know this has been true for our family in particular, and we're helping people with their quality of life. So I could go on for hours and share the stories that I've heard just from, you know, the simple decision that I started to take Plexus. But I mean, just trust me, you should not be ashamed of selling for a network marketing company. This company is absolutely incredible. And you guys are, I mean, to, at the risk of sounding cheesy, you guys are basically dealers in hope to people. I mean, you're providing them the hope of um, better financial future or better health, but better quality of life. It's a big deal, and I want to kind of um, close by telling you guys to stop using the internet and Facebook as a crutch. Start making this personal. Pick up the phone and call your friends. Bring it up to the people that you see in person. Um, the majority of my discussions happen because I chat with people when I see them. That Facebook posting is great, and it's a great way to get it out there. It's a great conversation starter. Um, and a great passive, you know, marketing campaign, but do not rely solely on Facebook posts. You have to bring that personal aspect to this business. So <clears throat> be bold this year in recommending the products to um, friends. Be bold with the opportunity and lead with the opportunity. This is a big deal. The worst that can happen is that they sign up as a customer instead. So you're going to be surprised at how many doors just leading with the opportunity opens and never shying away from offering, you know, that financial opportunity to people. Um, it's kind of like throwing a life raft out to somebody that's drowning or having an Advil in your purse and not giving it to the person complaining about a headache. It's a big deal. And we should all be really, really proud to be doing what we're doing. Um, so I want you to spend, after we get off this call, I want you to spend the next 60 seconds, as soon as we get off this call, writing down the first non-plexus names that pop into your head. So spend 60 seconds doing that. Those first five people, those are your personal calls, personal house visits, and personal sit downs that need to happen ASAP. Share the opportunity with them and share the excitement. Your 60 seconds starts now. Thank you guys.